Hey guys, so in this video I wanted to go into a little more details on some uh, really important items to know when using workflow. So there's a few things I'm going to cover and we're going to cover the basics of this and then we'll go into more details in future videos. But in this video we're going to cover basic, basic built-in actions, third-party apps and Apple apps, variables, and finally magic variables. So I want to start off by showing you a workflow that I've built already. Um, this is going to be the new quick note, and basically there's just three actions when it comes to this um, variable, or uh, workflow, I'm sorry. There is uh, a ask for input, so what this does is it asks a question, and the question is note, so basically what is going to be in my note. I leave the default answer blank, so that means we'll get a pop-up box asking us to answer this question, and the input type is just text. You can change it to number, URL, date. Um, and that'll kind of change how you input the information. But for right now, we're just going to leave that to text and we'll go into the other stuff later. Um, then it goes to create note. So this is create a note in Apple Notes. And this is a um, first party built in um, action. And this just uses the X car back URLs that we talked about last week um, or in the last video. Um, and then it goes to Quick Look, which is basically just at the normal default built-in Apple Quick Look feature. So let's run this variable and you can kind of see what it does. So we'll click the Start Run button. So it asks us a question, what is the note? And we'll say test for workflow, I can't spell, workflow video. Creates the note. Uh, we'll choose a note, we'll click Save. Quick look, so it says test for workflow video, done. So now that note is in notes. So this is kind of handy to have. Um, it like, like I said, it's, it's all very basic. It just asks a question, creates a note, and then you can kind of see a preview of it. I will say just kind of as a quick side note, quick look is amazing for debugging um, your workflows because if for some reason some input's not being right or something's not working right, just put a quick look in there and you can kind of see where it's what where um, the workflow is at and how it's functioning. So I use quick look a lot just for when I'm building workflows. The next one we're gonna do is a little more complex. Um, so we're gonna build one from scratch here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do the we're gonna do an ask for input. So there's ask for input. And what we're gonna do with this workflow is we're going to uh, build a um, Todoist uh, task manager or a new task for Todoist. Um, and this could work for any task manager. I personally use Todoist, so that's what I'm doing this for. You could use OmniFocus or whatever you use. Um, so for the question, we're going to put content. Uh, I'm a terrible speller. Um, so the question is content. Again, we're going to leave the default answer blank. If you fill in something, you don't get that pop-up box asking you what the answer is. It just automatically fills that in. So if you leave it blank, you get the pop-up box. Um, then we're going to go to set variable. And so what a variable is, for those that don't know, is a variable is a way to take data um, and basically use it in another place. Um, and that's probably a terrible definition. I'm, I'm trying to make it as easy to understand as possible. But basically, you, you know what, you, you'll see as we kind of go through. So we're gonna take this variable, we're gonna set it, the variable name, and we're just gonna call it content also. You can name it something completely different. It doesn't have to be named that. I'm just gonna, actually here, let's do this. We're gonna name it content two, just so it's a little bit easier. So you can kind of see it doesn't have to be named that. Um, the next uh, thing we're going to do is we're going to do ask for input again. And you'll notice these top two, the ask for input and, and set variable are linked. But this new ask for input is not. That means when you set the variable, this next, um, quest, this next field is not connected to that variable. It's disconnected. So it means this right here, the top two are a grouping. And then this next one is not. But it all runs in the st same workflow. So we're gonna do again. We're gonna we're gonna set we're gonna set the question to uh, due date, and then we're going to come over here and do set variable. And so what with that is we'll we'll call this uh, due date due date two. Oops, not sue date due date due date two. 
And so this will be our variable for due dates. So now what we can do is we can come over here and it's we, we could search for the to do us item, but it's actually the one we want right here. Um, for third party, what I do a lot for third party apps is if I can't find them, if you just search for them, it'll come up with all the options. So if you want OmniFocus, I don't have OmniFocus on this iPad right now, but we'll, we'll do to do us drag it to the bottom and it's an add to doist item is what we want. So for content, this will be what the name of the task is. We can set that. When you tap on this right here, you get this um, shortcut bar that appears at the bottom. This will have variables and inputs. Variables are the stuff in blue and that's the stuff we set. And then inputs are stuff the system has. So the app is running. So it could we could do ask one run and we'd get a pop-up box asking us what we want to fill this in as. We could do something from the clipboard, the current date, workflow input. But what we're going to do, we're going to hit content two for content. We're going to come down here to due date and hit due date two. And then on remind me on, we're going to use due date two again. So you can use variables multiple times. We're going to set the reminder type to push notification because nobody should ever, ever want emails. <laughs> um, but we're also going to change one more thing. We're going to use an input also. So for project, instead of leaving it in an inbox, we're going to hit ask when run. And then it'll ask us what we want. So now what we can do is we can run this. So it'll ask us what the content is. We'll say test for workflow. Hey, I spelled it right this time. Due date, we'll say tomorrow at 8 a.m. And since Todoist uses natural language input, that'll be an okay way to do it. We won't have to use like a, um, a date picker or anything. That'll set it as the variable. And it's gonna ask what we want the project to be. We're going to go ahead and just leave this as inbox, but you can pick any of these other stuff, um, including projects, uh, video projects, shopping, you know, anything that you have in your Todoist thing. And, and you know, all, all to-do apps work a little different. I just use Todoist. We're, and then we're gonna hit done. And then it's gonna build that. And then you can, when you get this URL at the bottom, that means it's complete. Um, we could have added a quick look in there so we could kind of see what it was, but that's okay. We don't, we don't necessarily need that. So that's it, that's, that's for building a task. Now I kind of want to show you guys um, magic variables. So in the last one, we here, I'll, let me show you again. We had to use the set variable um, uh, item. I'm going to go into this new calendar event. So we have an ask for input and we have a variable right here, but nowhere did we set the variable. So this is a, for a new calendar event. I have a question that says new event default, then the default answer is blank but there's no set variable. So what you can do, and I'm gonna delete this really quick, is you can, when you come over here into the notes option, you get the variable bar, or the, the, the shortcut bar, but there's this, um, in the bottom left corner, there's this wand icon. What that does is it brings up the magic variables. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit that now. And there's, there's only one in this workflow, and it's the ask for input. It knows, uh, workflow knows that ask for input can be used as a variable. So in having, instead of having it set as a variable, we can just tap this right here, and it'll be ask for input. It's a nice little shortcut so you don't have to constantly set something as a variable. Um, this was a feature that was added um, um, in one of the last major releases. It was the last major release right before Apple bought workflow. Um, so it's, it's there now. Um, and it's a really handy tool. It's really helped me when I've been building bigger workflows. It's helped me have not, it doesn't have so many items in the workflow. So it's a little easier to read and follow. Um, I personally think this is a huge, huge upgrade. Um, and this is just a small taste of what magic variables can do. I just kind of wanted to show that off. So that, that's that. I kind of wanted to show one last workflow of kind of how all this stuff works together. So I'm going to show a workflow every time I post a new video, I run this workflow. So this is the share new video. And basically what this does is I'll go out and get the URL for a video and then I'll copy it to my clipboard. So what this does is, and I'll kind of walk you through this, is it gets the clipboard. So it sees what's in my clipboard, which would be the URL to a video. It'll get the name, which will I will set as the title, the variable title. So that will be the title of the video. Then it gets the clipboard again. It grabs the URL from the input and then sets a variable as URL. And then I get an ask for input. So it'll ask me what hashtags I wanna put when, when sharing this video. 
So I can put in iPad, iOS, automation, workflow, anything like that. Sets that variable as a hashtag. Then it puts together this text. And what text does is it um, puts together a, um, a formatted text option. And you can do things with emojis like you see here. So I have the sirens. It says new post. And then in quotes, there's the title. So the title of the video the hashtags and then at the bottom a URL to use it so if you've seen my Twitter account when I when I share new videos that's how I get these formatted the same every single time then what that does is that copies all of that text and so it takes the variables and makes those regular text and all that stuff um, copies that to my clipboard and then opens the two Twitter accounts I use so I have one for the untitled site and my personal one and then I can share those to, so I can tweet those out. So it'll, I'll get a pop-up box that I'll ask, do you want to tweet these? And I hit tweet. And then after that, it takes the URL input, copies it to my clipboard and does open in. And then from there I can, I can post it to my Squarespace blog. So this is a little more complex than the other ones that I was showing. Um, I really, really like this one. I've, I've used it for a while and I always tweak it just a little bit more to make it run just a little more efficiently. And where it's at right now, it really works well for me. So this is just kind of a small taste of the things you can do with variables, built-in actions, and, and um, third-party applications. So I'm really happy with the way these have turned out. Um, if you have any questions about these, um, leave it in the comments below. Like I said, I'm going to do a big, I'm going to do a, a deeper dive now that we've kind of established a base for these. I'm going to do a deeper dive into these videos, or I'm sorry, into these inputs. I'm tripping all over my words today. Um, I'm going to do a deeper dive into these inputs and uh, go into a little more complex stuff. But I wanted to establish the base of what everything is. So if you have questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll, I'll answer them in the next video. Thank you guys for watching so much. If you're liking what I'm doing here with this automation stuff, please like and subscribe. It really does help out. Thank you guys.